I'm Josh Gregory. I'm the founder and CEO of Sugi, which is uh, the world's first uh, platform for people to check the carbon impact of their investments. And as of yesterday, to check how climate friendly their investments are in terms of how much global warming they're contributing to. Great. Um, that's really cool. So can you tell me a bit about your background? Like, have you always been involved in environmentally focused enterprises? Yeah, so I kind of became, I was, I've been interested in the environment for a very long time, obviously, um, like since I was a little kid, but I was, I worked for quite a long time in the city um, as a corporate M&A lawyer, um, at private equity funds and things like that. Um, and I decided that wasn't for me. So about eight or nine years ago now, which is kind of scary, um, I left and did an environmental master's at Imperial University, uh, Imperial College London. Um, and from that, I basically took a couple of um, jobs at various think tanks, which dealt with conservation finance and international finance for um, tropical forests, uh, conservation, nature, nature preservation. Um, and while I was working in that area, I kind of realized that actually what was needed was a way for everyday investors, everyday, you know, people who don't necessarily have special knowledge about investment, um, but are interested in it in, in terms of, of, of how they can make a difference, um, basically to have a tool that, could, that can do that. Um, which is how I ended up coming to Sugi, and that was about two years ago. Awesome. And how would you define ethical investing? Ethical investing is a funny one. I think ethical investing can probably cover a bunch of things. Um, so it's, it's really investing in line with your values, and that can be whether that's in terms of not investing in tobacco or guns or um, companies that are doing any sorts of things associated with that. Um, it could be investing in greener and in greener companies who are doing things in specific green sectors or who try to green their activities because they're in other sectors. Um, and then there are there are things like sustainable investing as well, which is a bit a bit more narrowly focused on that greener side of things. And then there's green investing, which is an ESG investing, um, which are also specifically different things. I think that's one of the problems that actually um, retail investors find is there is this plethora of, of ways of describing investing. Um, and as at Sugi, we try and cut through that a little bit. Yeah. So how how would you sort of differentiate, say, ethical investing from ESG or SRI investing? So ESG is is the kind of the technical kind of asset management industry way of talking about it, and that stands for environmental, social, and governance investing. So you're looking not just at the environmental impact of a company or a fund; you're looking at the social context to how they're operating, um, so whether that's workers' rights or diversity. And then for governance, um, there's a bunch of things that companies could be doing better in terms of how they're, how they're, how they're run, essentially. So ESG kind of pulls all those things together and, and builds these overall ratings. Um, for SRI, um, it's, it's a little more, bit more sort of nebulous, I'd argue. It's, I don't think anyone's settled on a particular definition that SRI is. And then sustainable investing, as I said, I think is probably more on the green side of things. And green investing is very specifically. That's kind of what we're concentrating on at Sugi, because I think it's... For a start, it's easier to have metrics which tell you how green something is rather than any other things like social and governance. It's actually a little bit more difficult to measure those things. So it's harder to get to grips. You have to do a bit more research. Um, but also, there's, there's, I think there's probably more value judgments associated with social and governance um, that we as, as, as an independent um, platform don't necessarily have the, the ability to, to make those judgments um, on behalf of the people who are using the platform. So. Um, and specifically, I'm from a green background, so that's my specific interest. Awesome. And how exactly does Sugi measure how green an investment is? So we started off looking at carbon impact. So that's the that's the carbon emissions associated with the companies in your underlying portfolio. And we look at individual companies. So if you've got an equity um, investment, like say something in the FTSE 100, uh, like Vodafone, we'd look at that. Um, and look at what their activities are, whether that's electricity usage, um, supply chain um, emissions, um, all the way up to the, the materials that they use as well to produce like whatever it is they produce. Um, and for funds and ETFs, we take a bottom-up approach, bottom approach to build the, the overall footprint of those, those funds and ETFs by looking at the individual companies they're composed of. So that's, that's, yeah, that's how we build our, our, carbon, our carbon profile of these investments. And actually two days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, gosh, time is moving pretty quickly at the moment. Um, but yesterday we launched our portfolio temperature um, alignment feature, which essentially shows people their entire investment portfolio, what degree of global warming is aligned with um, down to the degree centigrade. Um, so there is a, 
There is a Paris Agreement, um, international agreement to limit global warming to two degrees and if possible, 1.5 degrees. Um, but the average investment portfolio is associated with around three degrees. So that means the companies that underlie it um, generally are not behaving in a way that would lead to that, that two degree of warming. It would lead to much higher. And actually a lot of the test portfolios we've looked at are sort of four degrees and higher. So it's quite an eye opener. Um, and it just, it provides a, a whole new way of looking at, at how investments are how climate friendly investments are. Yeah, it seems to be such a tangible way, especially like knowing the exact degrees, it's like such a relatable way of aligning what's green with what you're actually doing to the environment. So I think that's, yeah, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, let's get into Sugi a bit then. Um, can you tell us a bit about the app and some of its features? Sure, so we're, we're available on iOS at the moment. We'll be launching on Android shortly, or slightly later this year. Um, and what you do is you connect. We use this technology called Open Finance, which is a relation of a, of a quite well-established technology now called Open Banking, which allows people to connect their, their investment platforms seamlessly to our app without, having to, without us having to store their information. So it's a completely secure and very smooth process. Um, so once you open up the app, you connect your investment platform um, and we cover all the major ones, um, all the you know, sort of top 10 in the market, as well as around 60 or 70 extra ones. So we've got really, really comprehensive market coverage. Um, so you open up the app, you connect your investment platform, and then you basically see the carbon impact um, overall and from an investment basis too. Um, and now you see the temperature alignment. <laughs> so once you, once you see the, car the carbon impact, you can, you can dial into the individual investments. And what we also provide is um, a relevant benchmark. So say if you've got a, if you've got a, say going back to Vodafone, um, you get the impact for Vodafone scale to your investment. So you know, maybe that's a certain number of kilograms of carbon or a certain number of tons of carbon, depending on how much you've invested in them. Um, what we do is then provide a benchmark, which is, a, so, is appropriate for that particular investment, showing you how the market is doing. So is this a good carbon impact or is this, is this not such a good carbon impact? Because you have to provide context in order to help people make decisions. And then we also provide a bunch of comparison investments. So looking at what the actual investment is, here are some other ones that you, know, you could be interested in looking at or, or understanding their impact. Um, and they, they will generally be, be lower impact than the one that you have. So it's kind of food for thought for the people using the app. And yeah, what does it mean exactly? We sort of touched on it um, a little bit, but what does it mean to have a green portfolio? Um, what does it mean to have a green? I, I suppose, well, what we do a little bit in the app um, is a bit of gamification. So we have um, a sort of color coding to tell you whether you're doing better or worse than the benchmark. Um, and there's a green green cloud next to your um, investment if you're doing better and a red, a red cloud if you're doing worse. And there's a forest in the background of your investment dashboard, which gets better and better the more green you have. So in, in Sugi's perspective, like if you've got all greens and you've got the best forest, then you're kind of doing pretty well, right? Whether you've got a green portfolio or not, is probably beyond us to judge, you know, as, as around, but definitely what we're telling people. Um, and then from a portfolio temperature, I mean, I think it's, it's probably more easy to judge because the world is aiming for, you know, 1.5 degrees if, if, you know, two degrees, if not 1.5 degrees of global warming. So if you've got like five degrees, then you probably don't have a green portfolio. <laughs> um, so that's much more easy to tell from an objective sense. Awesome. Um, and transparency is a word that comes up a lot with Sugi. And I was just wanted to know, why do you think that's such an important ethos for ethical investing or even just investing in general? I think, yes, transparency is really the heart of what we do. We're, we're very much a values led, values led company. Um, and, you know, everyone, everyone who works in the company believes in what we're doing. And we're here to address a gap in the market, which is there is a huge amount of information available to professional investors and asset managers and institution investors, um, which just simply is not available to retail. Um, and it's, it, you know, one can register for, for, some, for some very kind of technical platforms as a retail investor, but it's not translated in a way that's understandable. So our, our sort of vision of transparency is, is not so much kind of take, taking down the layers between um, retail investors and the investments because we're not actually an investment platform ourselves, we're independent. Um, it's more about kind of translating things that are actually quite technical um, and quite difficult to get hold of um, into, into ways that people can instantly understand and visualize and take action to improve. 
So that's great. Do you say it's for Sugi's for any kind of level of investor, whether you're just starting out or you are more advanced? For the moment, you have to already have an investment portfolio to use Sugi. So we're not aimed at people who, are, who haven't actually got one yet. Um, we do cover ISAs and SIPs and trading accounts um, at all the major brokers. Um, but we kind of operate on a, on a nudge principle for the moment as to how you can improve your existing portfolio. Um, the technical word, we don't use many technical words. So yes, it is, it is a very friendly, um, customer friendly platform. Um, and we don't provide a bunch of financial information on the grounds that people can probably find that financial information on their existing platform, or there'll be sort of better financial analysis somewhere else. Um, but yeah, it is, it is aimed at everyone who, is, who has a healthy interest in investing and probably manages their own portfolio, you know, if not daily, but at least, you know, every week or you know, a couple of times a month. Great. So my last question um, for you is, um, how do you think recent events like COVID-19, Biden's pre presidency, um, how do you think they've impacted ethical investing or the ways people invest? Hmm, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I think that the, the marketplace has shown that there's been a massive increase in ethical and sustainable investing. Um, and that's undeniable. Um, I think it makes sense in, in the way that a lot of people have been forced to question our relationship with each other and with the world and as to how we can kind of build, build a, better, a better environment, a, bit, a better way of relating to each other after the, after the pandemic. Um, and I think there's also been these kind of, you know, these, head, these, um, these following wins like um, Biden's return to the um, elections to the presidency, meaning the return to the Paris Agreement. Um, and there's COP26 this year, the big climate change conference. And I think everyone's really focusing on how, how companies and investments and finance can really um, contribute to actually solving the climate crisis. So I think, you know, it's fortunate for us because Sugi's launching at a very, a very um, pertinent time. Um, and I think as we, as we move into, the, into COP26 later in the year, we've got some really exciting features planned, which will complement what we've already got, but also help people take action so um, at the moment, you know, there's a lot of understanding going on, but we want to increase the ways that people can, through Sugi, help actually improve their portfolios and to make them, you know, make their finances more, more climate friendly.